French daredevil Remy Enigma has just passed away after falling 30 floors down a Hong Kong skyscraper that he was free climbing, which is what he was known for. And David, a lot of people are talking about it. Yeah, RIP to Remy Lucidi. Uh, definitely not making light of this, but it is sparking a ton of different discussions on the internet right now. Some are about social media, some are about clout, some are about daredevilism, and other people are basically asking the question, do you have the right to just do whatever you want with your life as long as you don't hurt other people? And of mm. course, a lot of people are saying you should just not play with your life because you only get one. All right, everybody, we're going to go through the comment section. Please hit that like button and let us know if you like the commentary and the news that we cover. Um, I guess, you know, I don't want to make light of it, but David, but you know, I mean... Remy, this guy is taking a lot of risks, and I just feel like when you do something like free climbing, which is essentially climbing buildings or rocks or mountains without any sort of gear, without any sort of gear, just your hands, and you're free climbing, you're doing it kind of because you want to be known for it, and you're doing it for a legacy because you wouldn't risk your life like that for what, nothing? Yeah, I mean, I think that a lot of people have a lot of different reasons. Maybe his name was Remy Enigma because he was like, people can't figure me out why I would take such tremendous risk exposure to do what I do, but this is who I am. So mm -hmm. anyway, let's get in the comments section. Um, somebody said, bro went out doing what he loved. He lived his life fully. Not many can say that. The only people hating are either jealous or can't comprehend a life outside of the matrix, which they are stuck in. Better to live a short life of what you love than a long life in a miserable way. Somebody said he's probably smiling on his way out. Obviously, I uh, pulled these comments from his Instagram page, a lot of people eulogizing him, but I can also see this perspective as well. Ah, uh, yeah, I get it. No, and I do think that for himself in his own soul, I guess if we want to look at it this way, I don't think he's mad about the way he went out. No. Because if you're a daredevil, evil Knievel, you're jumping over cars, you're doing crazy stuff, that's what you love to do, that's what brings you joy in life. However, he could have hurt other people doing this. That's what I don't like. Yeah, you know you're what I mean? saying on the fall down, he actually broke, uh, you know, not to get too much into the details, a gas pipe during his fall. That could have caused yeah. problems for he other people. He fell on someone's balcony. If there was a kid on that balcony, that kid is dead too. So he could have hurt other people. Obviously, rock climbing, you're less likely to kill another person because it's just rock. Like, who's how many people are down below at the rocks? You know right, what I mean? Right, right, right. You're just out in the middle of nowhere. So that's what I'm saying. Free climbing in the city, it's a little more dangerous. And so I don't I, like that he could have yeah, hurt other people. I don't like the potential disregard for falling on somebody because in the past it's happened before yeah if you want to be a daredevil in a controlled environment go so be it listen That's it's a free world you know you could do whatever you want right i guess people in the past in the 1920s when they were building up new york the industrial revolution and people took all types of really scary jobs working on the skyscrapers yeah. too those were very high risk as well right somebody said this is just darwin keeping the gene pool clean of course andrew this got posted on so many different reddit subreddits that are like Dar darwin awards which i guess uh basically you know call these people stupid right right right, right. somebody said there's a very fine line between being brave and being stupid. Mm. Do you think that's true? Because a lot of people, especially when they're in high school, they do things that could be very brave and cool and legendary if they work out and very stupid if they go downside. Yeah, I just feel like bravery, and this is the difference to me between being brave and just like not caring, is uh, bravery, generally there's a connotation that what you're doing is something good. You're saying there's some sort of massively positive impact for yeah, the world. Yeah, like or something? you're brave. You're an 18 year old World War II. You're getting drafted or to go to war. You run or, into a burning building to save an yeah, old woman. Yeah, or you jump in front of a car to say or to push away uh, your someone you love. You're brave. You know, you're doing something generally good. Firefighters, policemen, brave. You know what I mean? I see what you're saying. You're putting your life at risk for the societal good, right? Usually, yes. Somebody usually. says 30 is a ripe old age for a skyscraper climber, though. There's not that many that, like, keep doing it or still are still alive in their 30s. Mm. Uh, I, I'm not sure. I never really looked well, into David, that Well, David, what world. are the more details of the story? I guess he was, he had climbed up the building already. To the 68th floor. And then he was on his way down, climbing down. Yeah, on, and then on the 64th floor, there was a mishap, or he discovered it was too steep. The conditions, I don't know what, I, I don't know anything about it. Like, maybe the wind is it going got too more dangerous. And he yeah. knocked on the window of somebody on the 64th floor. There was a maid in there, and she got scared and went to go call the police. And there was a lot of debate about, like, could she have opened the window? Or maybe the windows don't really open, but maybe there was a little crack to get a handhold mm -hmm. and then wait for the rescue crews. Nobody knows. Right, right, right. And I, I guess... 
I mean, most people I feel like are not blaming the maid because the maid is doing her job protecting that household, which if she let some crazy guy in who's climbing up a wall, she doesn't know what's going right, on. Who's to say the window even opens, though? Yeah, you're right. Maybe the window doesn't even open, and maybe this guy is there to rob her, to be honest. You see a guy climbing your building, it's kind of weird. Like, you do your your first instinct is not like, oh, this is this, uh, oh, that's the French daredevil. I know Right, him. right, right. You can't just, uh, he can't have that assumption that everybody's just going to react to that. Like, oh my God, let me like yeah. shatter the window. And, for and, you it, and it's probably unfortunate that the environment did change and, and made his climb harder and more dangerous. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I can honestly be see people like seeing it from the side, being like, "Wow, All right, Dave, I gotta laugh at this comment because this is uh, a racial comment or a stereotypical comment. Someone said a black guy said black people ain't ever doing any kind of this crap, man. Yeah, I mean, it's true that all the daredevils, majority wise, if we were able to plot, chart it out, and get the statistics and you know, crunch the numbers. I would say that they, you know, the people who swim with sharks and stuff, I want to say they're like 90 to 95% white. Someone said, yo, this is a white way to die. And I was like, it is true. Even Asians, man, there's definitely, listen, I see all types of people maybe jumping from one or two stories up, doing a backflip, running down, maybe jumping into a pool 20 feet high. You know, those things are definitely dangerous. But on this level, like purposely swimming with sharks and doing this crazy stuff, like climbing, free climbing buildings, I just don't see other types of yeah. people do them aside from white to, people or Russian people. To be fair, there was a Chinese daredevil that I, I want to say that passed away three or four years ago doing the same thing. It happens. It happens. But, but just yeah, not you as know much. What? I, I would say that that is a overall macro stereotype that the overwhelming majority of daredevils, uh, whether it, it ends up good for them or bad for them, are white. Let Somebody me said, know uh, in the comments down below why you think that is. Why does it seem like most daredevils are white? Well, there was some explanation. Somebody said only white people need to do this to get their adrenaline pumping. Us black people got enough adventure in our everyday life. Mm. Somebody said white people are seeking a rush to their nervous system because they are bored. Being black keeps our adrenaline heightened every day just to exist and survive honestly if it's you guys really know they're, they're, the life is are very different man and and there could be some absolute truth to that somebody said smh if god wanted you up in the air like that he would have made you a seagull or something why play with your life somebody said if you live by the sword you die by the sword you die the way that you live you cannot keep cheating death like that repeatedly time and time mm. again um like i said man it really depends. Like some people, they need to swim with sharks, right? And or some people need to go do high risk exposure activities to feel something. You know, there was a time in my life where I did some higher risk activity and I got hurt one time or there was like a close call. And I just decided, you know what? That life is not for me. I'm yeah. not going to do that dumb did crap anymore. Did it result in you? I remember, I don't want to give them too much I hit details, my head. but did you end up getting a CAT scan? No, I ended up going to the right. ER. I'm fine. Nothing really happened, thankfully, but it could have been a lot worse. Right, right, so right. So just be, you know what? It depends on what legacy you want to leave, man. Somebody said, I'm not going to crack a joke. It honestly seemed like something he's doing. There's a lot of people, especially nowadays like him, that are adrenaline driven. They love the risk. They know the risks. It uh, is what it is, and I still consider it tragic. May he rest in peace. But uh, it is what it is. Somebody said, this is not a video game where you die and you get another life. All I can say is he died doing what he enjoyed. But he did also have a GoPro with him. So clearly he is filming it and he was planning on posting it. I'm not saying that he was going to get a million followers from it, but he clearly was going to show people what he was doing. No, for sure. I mean, he always travels with the GoPro. Somebody said if it wasn't for social media, he'd still be alive. People doing way too much nowadays for likes and comments. This goes I, back I, to the clout-driven culture. How much dopamine you get from likes, engagements, comments, your photo going viral. My thing is, is like people nowadays, they do have to fight against social media a little bit harder. That urge to post something just for the likes, it's not something that our ancestors had to deal with. People even 20 years ago really had to deal with, right? Where you could just post something on the internet and get a bunch of dopamine back. So you gotta fight that urge a little bit more and it's even harder nowadays. But regardless, it is on you. I notice a lot more people are doing the street style of being a daredevil, maybe in the past. And I'm sure there was street level ones that were not as popular, but you kind of had Houdini, uh, you know, Evil Knievel, where they were way more calculated and commercialized with it. Nowadays, it feels like everything's been brought to just like, yo, I'm just wild doing well, because, it. Obviously, because it was illegal for him to be on the top of that building at all. And well, the security because, guards were chasing him. Yeah, to be honest, anytime somebody can film something crazy with their phone and get more views than a TV show. 
Yeah. I remember, uh, and remember Punked, that show with Ashton Kutcher? Everybody does that, but even more intense nowadays, but just for social media. Yeah, yeah. Like Twitch streamers yeah. would do it, or pranksters yeah. would do it. It's more, it's more often and more intense. Somebody said, if you want to gauge the state of society, read the comments on a dead man's post. It'll tell you how evil and disgusting people have become. Um... I don't know if I really believe this. Yes and no, but I mean, I don't think there's anybody glad that this happened, but a lot of people have a lot of different takeaways from it happening. I mean, a lot of people don't feel bad. And I don't think you're wrong for not feeling bad because, yeah. But, yeah, because you somebody don't have just made up. a choice with their yeah, life and it's like, what are you going to do, feel no, bad about everybody? It crosses everybody? the like, line from not feeling bad, which is fine, to going on his page and disrespecting him mm, and yeah, spitting on his grave, right? Which which is wrong, and you don't cross that line, but you don't have to be sad for him because there's a lot of people to be sad for. Anyway, let's just get into our takeaways, man. Um, Yeah, I just think that in 2023, if you feel like everything's been accomplished by either your group or, you, you know, people you relate to, you may go seek and say, you know, uh, you know, uh, all these other people, they've already done like such great things in our history, but like I need to push forward in uh, the way that I can. And uh, if I take the risk, then I take the risk. And that's why I don't really feel bad or good about it. I'm just like, yo, man, somebody made a decision based off the life that they've lived and the perception of themselves of how they felt like they were going to push forward and push the envelope and be historical and have a Wikipedia, et cetera, et cetera. And, and there is risk associated with that. Yeah. And I think that you can one on one aspect, you can sit back and say, you know what? He died. He didn't hurt anybody else doing what he loved. That's great. I wish that upon more people. I wish more people could, if they were going to pass away anyways, could pass away doing something they love. Or at least I just wish more people could just do more of what they love. But the only thing about this is if he had hurt somebody on the way down mm. or damaged, truly damaged somebody's property, then literally you're messing with other people's lives now. You know what I mean? And yeah. I'm just saying like for that, I guess it's a selfish thing for him to do. Is That's there, selfish. Yeah, it's selfish it, for him. Yeah, it is. It is and it and is. I'm not saying he's a bad guy. I'm sure he's a nice guy. Uh, but that is selfish. Yeah, maybe very one-track minded. Yeah. Had the blinders on, the horse yeah. blinders. Do you think there's anything to say, like, you know, um, you know, some people, a lot of people, even famous people, they they overdose on drugs, but some people saying uh, that dopamine or social media validation should be categorized as a drug. Yeah. And he I, potentially OD'd OD from that. I don't think he's only doing this for social media clout. I don't think, I mean, there's been free climbers throughout history. There's been a couple that have died in America. Um, you know, there's globally, a couple, right? yeah, a couple yeah. notable ones. And globally, there are people, yeah, you said there was a Chinese guy who died free climbing. So it's not just for clout. It's just these thrill seekers. But, you know, you risk... You, you have, there's always a risk, man. And I think some of these people, maybe they didn't have full fledged families that they had to care about because if you had a family you had to take care of, let's be honest, you're probably not doing this. Or there's only very, very few like partners who would marry you knowing that you're putting your life at an unnecessary risk. Yeah. You know what I always notice, man? And I'll end with this guys, RIP, like I said to Remy Lucidi, uh, YOLO means such different things to two different people. You know, like YOLO, sure. like you only live once. Some people are like, oh, I only live once. That must mean I have to like protect my life yeah. and like be more conservative. But other people are like, oh, YOLO, I got to go all out. Balls to the wall, you know, 11 out of 10. Last question, David. I'm just going to throw it out there. Uh, what's up with white daredevils? Like, what does it feel like white people? And he's French, but, you know, whatever. He's like, I guess white, but maybe not. But no, yeah. it, it, does it feel like uh, they, like, have conquered everything, so they want to conquer buildings and nature? Yeah, and I mean, I would say, and it's no disrespect or anything, that's the general sentiment amongst a lot of minorities who what do we have internal this discussions about this theory. They would say that, you know, most of the world speaks a Western language or, you know, the colonies or just the last 400 years have been very Western European. So the only thing left to conquer is nature. Or so if is, you swim with sharks or you do is things. Is there some deep culture that kind of like always likes like a masochistic where that means you like pain, but I guess like where you told the line between like life and death and that is like what gives you meaning in life, yeah. I guess. Yeah, I mean, I you know. can say it's a Spartan mindset, 300, whatever. I'm not sure, you know. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. I'm sure there is somebody who's read a lot more books and a lot more posts on this topic than we have. Like I, get, uh, like I said, again, keep it civil. This was not to throw dirt on any man's name. If anything, no. I'm sure that he would have been glad that we made this video to have this discussion. Yeah, listen, we're talking about him, man. I mean, this is part of his legacy, to be honest. But anyways, guys, uh, 
yeah, just be careful with your lives. But uh, all right, thank you for watching the Hot Pop Boys. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.